Good morning. So, we're going to start off with some questions. I have a graph of, well, it's actually a table on the board, of worker A and worker B. You guys are going to work in pairs, and I'm going to ask you to answer two questions in your pair, and then I'm going to call on you guys and just see what your thought process was, okay? So, you guys can work it. So you're going to write a couple things down. You're going to answer two questions. Uh, actually, three questions. Now these numbers are all different, so they don't work the same number of hours, so you can't compare them straight across, okay? So the first thing that you need to figure out is how much do worker A and B both make per hour, okay? So you just have to figure out, okay, what would I do to figure out how much they make per hour? Then, yeah, don't say it a lot. Then you have to, uh, to tell me basically how did I find this answer, and then finally, assuming that you make the most, uh, want to make the most money per hour, would you want to be working at worker A or worker B's job? Okay, so go ahead with a partner. You guys can work, work on this together. One that I'm really interested in is question number two. How do you find your answer? Like, what did you do to figure it out? Because I guarantee you there's going to be three or four different ways that each one of you did this.
Good. I'm going to give you guys another uh, two or three minutes to think about it. And then I'm going to ask a couple of you what you guys did to answer this. Okay, so that would be the number one way to figure it out really quick, okay? You just take the pay and divide by the hours. Now, this, this table, did you guys do the exact same thing? Dividing the pay by the hours? Okay. Did anybody figure this out differently? Because there are quite a few different ways to do this. Okay. Nobody did anything different than that? as well. Okay. All right. So if you simply take 168 and you divide by 12, you're going to get, what was it guys? It was $14 per hour. Okay. So now we're introducing, yeah, you can, we're introducing rate of change, which in this case is going to be constant or be the same for this entire lesson. So this is like rule number one, basically. So when we're introducing rate of change, it's going to be constant for these lessons. So it's going to be the same thing over and over and over. So if you were to go to work, how, how many actually have a brother or sister or anybody that has a job? Okay. 
So do they actually pay them more the more they work, or is it the exact same every single time per, per hour? It's the, it's the same, okay? Now the only time that will change is if you get overtime, if you work 40 hours a week, over 40 hours a week, but they're not paying you more uh, per, per hour that you're there, okay? All right, so that's how this works. The second one, could I have taken any of these numbers, these ordered pairs? What do you guys think? So these are technically ordered pairs, okay? So you have your x value, your input, and your output, which is your y value, okay? Can I have used any of those to divide? Who, who says yes? Yes, okay, good. All right, so you can use any of these. If you took 416 and you divide by 32, you will get 13, okay? So B, they are actually making $13 an hour, okay? So if you were worried about how much money you would make, who in here would work at company B if given the choice? Okay, and then who would work at company A? B company A, you'd be making a dollar extra. All right, any questions on this? So this was the very first part of slope or rate of change. Now there's another way to figure these answers out. And this is what they're gonna ask you to do. So. This is the part that we need to, uh, we're going to learn early on today, and then you guys are gonna be asked to do this later, okay? So, they're gonna give you two points, okay? So we're actually gonna take two numbers from here, just because you can see it. They're gonna give you 12, 168, and they're gonna give you 35, 490, okay? From those points, you're gonna to have to figure out essentially the rate of change or how much money per hour they're making, okay? So each one of those, you're gonna label each point as uh, point number one and point number two. So it doesn't matter which one you do, but if we were to label this one and this two, you would have X1, y1, and x2, y2. This will make sense here in a second, okay? So, to figure out the slope from two points, which is by far the hardest part of rate of change, like it's not even close, you are going to take those and put them into the slope formula, okay? So who has actually seen a slope formula before? A couple, y equals what? That is points, uh, that's slope intercept form. Who is the slope formula? Okay, so the slope formula, the formula for slope, which is M, will actually equal Y2 minus Y1 divided by X2 minus X1. Has anybody seen that before? Yeah, okay, good. So basically that's what we're doing, and all we're gonna plug in is these numbers. Okay, so we're gonna take 490 and subtract 168. And then x2, which is 35, subtracting x1, which is 12. Does anybody not see where we got those numbers from? Okay, so I'm just taking y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. So I don't have a calculator on me, I'll grab one real quick. All you have to do is figure out what 490 minus 168 is, would be 322. And then 35 minus 12 is 22. Then all you have to do is just take those numbers and divide them. So 322 divided by 23, and I would get 14. Does everybody see that? So that's what they're expecting you to know how to do to get the slope of the line, okay? Any questions on that? No. No questions? All right, okay, good. So. Um, you guys are now going to get out your computers. I'm actually going to, we're going to try out something brand new today for me.
Okay, so this is an interactive lesson. So you guys are going to go to, it's not www, all you have to do is type in C-U-R-I dot live. So this is in your address bar at the very top. There is a PIN number, it'll ask you to put in 528-743. So this is a, a fun way to introduce slope. Um, it can be very boring if just taught on um, by graphs and just lines, but this kind of gives you like a real world example of what this is useful for, okay? Your PIN is uh, 528 Seven four three. It's a. Uh, it's actually not an app, so you're just gonna go to curi dot live. It'll ask you for your. It asks you for your name, so you just put in uh, first name and then last initials. Just gonna make sure you guys are all in before we start. This is a good way to anonym, anonymously answer. So if you guys don't know, but you're too worried to answer, it's actually a good way to do that. PIN number is 528-743. Uh, okay, does anybody need help getting in? Okay, so we're going to start this. So basically, you, you might have heard of slope before, but we're going to go over what the definitions are and essentially what your thoughts are on them, okay? Uh, let's go ahead. Alright. Okay, so what is slope? Okay, so this is a interactive, so yeah, your, your pin number was uh, 528-743. Okay, so on the board, it has, what is slope? So basically, slope is a measure of how steep a line is, okay? It is the ratio, so that means, what do you have when you have a ratio? You have a fraction, okay? So a ratio is always a fraction. The ratio between the vertical and the horizontal change in the line. So the y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1, okay? So has anybody heard of rise and run before? Okay, that's typically how it's first introduced, okay? So it is found by calculating the vertical change which is your rise divided by the horizontal change, which is your run between two points, okay? And then finally, it can either be, how many things can it be? What do you guys think? Slope, how many things can it be? There's four different. It could be either positive, it could be negative, it could be zero, meaning it doesn't make a flat line, or undefined. Is it working 
Okay, so the code is 528-743. Yeah. All right, so that's a lot of like definition up there. So basically, it's how steep a line is. It's the ratio between the vertical and horizontal change. Vertical is always first, okay? So that's your rise, and then your run is uh, your horizontal movements, okay? All right, so let's go to the next slide. Okay, so in picture form, if I have a positive slope, um, technically this one over here, on the left. So now what you're gonna do is you're always going to read from left to right, okay? So if I have starting in the bottom left and I'm going all the way up this hill, do you think I'm walking up the hill or am I walking down the hill? You're walking up the hill, okay? So you're gonna be walking up the hill. So that's the same thing with the essentially the steepness or the positive slope of the line. So this one right here, this is a positive slope, okay? And then second, over here, negative slope. So if I'm starting on the left-hand side of this picture and I'm going to the right, am I walking downhill or am I walking uphill? You're walking downhill, okay? All you have to do is just basically look at a graph, read from left to right, and you'll know if you have a positive or negative slope. Just act as if you were the one that was sitting on top of the hill or the bottom of the hill. If you had to walk up, that's positive slope. And if you walk down, that's negative slope. Okay? Any questions on that one? So this is more of a visual. Okay? All right? You're going to go to, you should read that line and then enter in uh, a code. I'll tell you what to do. Luis will be able to help you out. Okay. So some just information just to make this kind of fun. The longest ski slope in the world is in Norway. Um, it's 11.2 kilometers long, okay? Does anybody know how long a kilometer is? Anybody? Okay, any guess at all? Like how long do you think 11.2 kilometers is? <laughs> So if you guys were to Google this in your phone and you would just put 11.2 kilometers to miles, how many miles are you guys guessing? What do you guys think before I Google it? Is it more or less? Is it more or less? That's a good question. I think it's a little bit more. Who thinks that uh, kilometers is longer than a mile? Okay, who thinks that kilometers are shorter than a mile? It is kilometers and shorter than a mile, okay? So if you were to break this down, um, one kilometer, so one mile is 1.609 miles. So this ski slope, believe it or not, is almost seven miles long, okay? Which would be insanely long. Uh, the steepest slope in the Swiss, Swiss Alps is a gradient of 105%, basically 180. <coughs> Uh, excuse me, 105%. <clears throat> so essentially, just think of like going straight down, essentially. That's what that would be, okay? Very fast, very scary. And then, uh, yeah, you're good. Slalom is basically a sloping meadow, so just some fun stuff from Norway, okay? All right, next part. So we're still dealing with slope. Working in your pair, Okay, I want you to pair it partner up with shoulder partner. Okay, what's the difference between positive and negative slope? How does it relate from the, uh, to the direction of a line on a graph? So if you start on the left, talk with your partner, and are you going up with positive slope or are you going down? So work with a shoulder partner. With your shoulder partner, guys. What do you guys think? Positive and negative, what's the difference? Uh, <laughs> oh, I forgot, so. You're going to be answering some stuff. Here. So 
So now is when you work with a partner and then you're going to be answering some stuff individually. So, answering in your pairs, what is the difference between positive and negative slope? You guys can help each other out. So we're going to take a look at some of the answers here in a second. We got 20 seconds. So we've got a bunch of answers on here, which is good. Uh, the difference is uh, that when the slope is positive, it goes up, and when it's negative, it goes down. Okay, so that is partially correct. Um, to make it 100% correct, when you're reading from left to right, absolutely. Okay, the difference between the two is that when the slope is positive, you go up, when the slope is negative, it goes down. You can think of this as money. It's actually pretty good. I like that. Okay. Positive slope goes up and negative goes down. One goes down, the other goes up, that is true. Um, let's just do some random ones in here. Negative goes down, positive goes up. The difference between positive and negative slope is that one goes downward or decreases. Positive slope goes up, and I'm gonna assume that it says increases. Yeah, very good. All right, so everybody's got a really good answer on this, like a pretty good gra uh, grasp. So it's when you're reading from left to right, okay? So that's the only difficult part with this. Um, when you're looking at a graph or looking at it visually from left to right, as soon as that graph goes upward from bottom left to top right, that's a positive slope. When it goes downward from top left to bottom right, that's a negative slope, okay? All right, you guys did well. So let's go ahead to the next thing. Next thing. Very good. Okay, so this one's a little bit hard, harder, but if you have a slope of a line, okay, how does that relate to the steepness, okay? Like you guys, uh, let me see, is this not working? All right, let's see, pause this. I'll go over it if it's not gonna work. Okay, so it didn't let you answer, but um, if you have a steep, the steeper the line, the more upright it's going to be. So I'll write right over the top of this. Okay. So if you have two lines. You have the black line here, and then you have the green line here. 
when they ask you which one is steeper, which is actually what you're going to have a question on this later, okay? Now, is the black line steeper or the green line? What do you guys think? Who says green? Show of hands. Okay? So I want you guys to think of it as like steps or if you're going up stairs. Um, so at times, there'll be stairs that are uh, flat and it takes a long time to get higher up into the air. And then there's other times when you have stairs that get you up in the air right away, okay? So steepness, basically what you're doing is you're measuring from the bottom starting point to the ending top or the highest point, okay? So if this point in this vertical change is higher, okay, because you're looking at the vertical change from top to bottom or bottom to top, okay? It's larger, so your vertical change is larger on the green than it is the black, okay? So your steepness of the green line is going to be larger, okay? Good? So the distance, let's say this is only a vertical change of like eight, let's just say it's eight. This would be a vertical change of anywhere from 11 to 12. That's the only difference. Okay, so let me go ahead and close that down. All right, so the responses didn't work, but essentially your steepness is, uh, the faster it goes up and down, the more steep your slope is, okay? The slower it goes up and down, the, uh, the less steep your slope is. You will be asked about that later on. All right, you guys are bored, so you're gonna draw a uh, brain break, brain break, okay? You get to draw an animal of anything that you want on your computer, it's kind of interesting, some of the stuff. Skiing down a hill, okay? So we're gonna go skiing down a hill. So I'm gonna give you five minutes, and I wanna see some of the funny stuff that you guys can come up with. You guys have touch screens on your laptops too, so you can do it with your fingers. It should work. <laughs> we're gonna vote on who's the best. Five minutes. Any animal you want. Drawing, skiing down a hill.
guys have about 50 seconds or so. Put the finishing touches. So we're going to vote. Let's see what we got here. All right, we have 18 drawings. All right, so the funniest drawing. Uh-oh, why is it not showing? Oh, you guys are voting. You guys are getting to vote. I don't get to vote. That's a bit itch. There's some pretty good ones on here. Oh, I think you're voting in pairs. Like, this one's better than that one. It's A or B, basically. I'm glad I didn't, uh, didn't draw, because I would not be winning. <laughs> I would be losing. I think you get to vote on nine. I think that's how this works. Eight stars? Uh, means you might have gotten eight votes. 118 votes, I know that. 119 votes, yep. What? Yours is not open. That's weird. Hmm. Oh, my hair is tied up. You don't have to vote too much. 130 votes, all right. How many in the class today, too? A lot of people say. How many of us say 30? It's only 18. Oh, because uh, you're voting nine times. All right, the winner with 12 votes was this one. That's actually pretty cool. Actually, the number two is good, too. Those are really good. All right, so we have some good artists in here. That's cool. Number one. Number two, so second place. That's pretty cute, actually. That's pretty good. And last, or third place. So this one looks like he's on a ski jump. I say he because he's kind of got like a, a mean face going. I like it. It's good. All right, good stuff. All right, so hopefully that was entertaining. Now we're going to get into a couple other things. So each one of you are going to get a minute to write down what you remember as your personal definition of slope, and then we're gonna review it. So what is your definition of slope? So we, we did a couple of these things. It's or actually, you don't write it down, you're gonna click on it. Okay, so A, B, or C. An area under a curve. You'd be surprised. That so, so. Okay, looks like 12 of you answered. Uh, yeah, you did. Or actually, she did. So it's going to be your turn. Okay, I think we're waiting on one, maybe? Uh, no, I think it doesn't need a computer. Yeah. I just case. Alright, we'll go ahead and stop it. Alright, 
All right, so the number one answer, the ratio of the vertical change to the horizontal change between two points on a line. Okay, so that is correct. So basically you're looking at how fast it goes up versus how, um, how far it goes from left to right or horizontal change. Whoa. All right, good. All right, next one. So I did this on the board real quick. How do you calculate the slope between two points when you have x1, y1, and x2, y2? This is the one that I did on the, on the board. This one is actually a little bit harder, okay? I didn't look at the three uh, answers, but potential answers. Let's go ahead and review. So, 14 of you said that you're going to take y2, subtract y1, and then divide x2 minus x1. That one is correct, okay? Uh, I think one of each of the other ones, where it's x1, uh, x1 plus x2 plus y1 plus y2, that is not correct. It's a ratio. This one's a little bit harder. This is the inverse case. This is flipping. So if you chose C, okay, you put the X's first instead of the Y's, okay, but this one, let me annotate over the top of it, you have your two points, and if they gave you 1, 5, and gave us 6, 14, okay, you're always going to take your Y first, okay, so if I were to label these as 1 and 2, you have your X1, your Y1, X2, Y2. All right, so the very first thing that you want to do is always look at your rate of change in your vertical, okay? So it's rate of change of um, your Y value. So you're going to have Y2 minus Y1 divided by X2 minus X1, okay? Which our answer was A, okay? This is actually one of the more difficult concepts. All right, so if you guys understand that, which the majority of you do, we're doing very well. We're going to stay on track very well. All right, the next one. What does a positive slope indicate about a line? So go ahead and work on this. What does a positive slope indicate about the line? So you have to think about the direction that it goes, and it goes, it does what, essentially? So positive slope. Alright, so it rises from left to right, okay? So if we actually look at a line, we're essentially reading from left to right. It's going to rise, it's going to go from the bottom left to the top right, upper right. Horizontal um, is incorrect, that is if you actually have negative slope, or sorry, uh, slope of zero. You literally don't get any rise if it's a flat line. We'll go over that here in a little bit. And then if it falls from left to right, that is actually negative. Okay. All 
All right, good. All right, but, uh, I think we only have two more. And I actually just mentioned it. What does a zero slope indicate about a line? So this one's a little bit harder. What is zero slope? What is that? What does zero slope indicate about a line? What doesn't fall? Doesn't fall or rise. All right, so if you have zero slope, it's going to be horizontal. It'll be a horizontal flat line, okay? Um, I'll actually use this graph. This is kind of perfect, actually. Um, so just to reiterate here, this right here, if this was the line, the top of this bar gra uh, graph, okay, it's flat. It's just straight horizontal from left to right. There is no slope because there's no change in your vertical distance, okay? So at this point right here, it doesn't go any higher than that point on the right-hand side as well. So the slope is zero, okay? Pretty straightforward. It does not rise from left to right. That's, that's positive slope. And it doesn't decrease from left to right because that's negative slope, okay? So you guys are good to go. You are understanding this well. All right, the final pull. So, this is actually the toughest. Which of the following lines has an undefined slope? Undefined, so you guys have a minute to answer this. So undefined's a little bit harder, and we'll go over it. All right, good, so this one, let's see what our, what our responses were. Okay, this is kind of what I thought. So, um, this is the most difficult concept to understand, okay? So a horizontal line is always going to be a slope of zero. So I'm gonna go for uh, this first one on the left. So the reason why this is a slope of zero, because we're measuring the change in vertical distance. Okay, so if I were to start right here, and this would be point number one, my first point, okay, and let's say we're on a, um, a coordinate plane, let's just do this, okay, this is y equals two, okay, this point over here, one, two, three, four, six, x equals negative six, so this point is negative six, two, for that point. Now, at the very end, if I go over to this point, so it'd be one, two, three, four, five, six. So y or x is six, and my y is still two. So it's measuring the change in your y values. Okay. So what's two minus two, guys? It's zero. Okay. So that's the easiest way to think about horizontal line having a slope of zero. The hard part to understand and comprehend and why most people get this wrong. I'm gonna do this right inside the box. Okay, a vertical line literally is straight up and down. Okay, so now if I'm measuring, if I'm trying to measure 
the distance of a, a, of a line that goes straight up and down, do these ever have an ending point? What do you guys think? Mm -hmm. They do not, okay? So they keep going on forever. So that, that line just goes on forever. So basically your rate of change, there is no change. There's no stopping point, okay, for this particular line. So it is going to be undefined. So whenever you see a vertical line, your slope is always undefined, okay? Because your slope is going just straight up. All right, this one over here, this is a point. This is actually a really, uh, so basically what this is, this is two ordered pairs. The point zero, zero is here in the middle. And then the point four, four. So one, two, three, four. Okay. So this particular one, you're gonna learn how to graph, but that one would have a slope of one, okay? Because it would go up one, which would do rise, over one, which would do run, okay? To figure that out, you would just take y, uh, y2, which is four, minus y1, which is zero, four minus zero, divided by x2, which is four, x1 is zero, so you would have four over four equals one. Any questions on that? Okay, you guys are pretty good. I figured you would be. All right, we're gonna take about a five minute break and then we're gonna open up, uh, or actually, I'm gonna open up Math Excel. And you guys are going to use the whiteboards. We're going to go through some of these problems. So take five minutes and grab a whiteboard and a marker that works. Alright guys, so make sure you have a whiteboard and one that, uh, a marker that works. So you guys can close your curry pods up. Curry pod. Curry pod. I haven't I haven't assigned any problems yet. We're gonna actually do these on the whiteboard first. I just gotta make sure you guys are understanding this. All right. So this first one. This first one is going to be on your DFA. Okay. This one is half a word problem 
and half just a table. Okay, so there's a word problem associated with it, but there's actually another word problem that's even harder that's on this DFA. Okay, so this one, it's dealing with slope. Why is it dealing with slope? Because it's similar to what I did at the very beginning of class. It has a table. Okay, so this one instead of money and hours, okay, or hours worth and money, this one has time and elevation. So basically you have to think about this like conceptually. You have to think about an airplane flying through the sky. So they don't tell you in this explanation here, it says determine whether the rate of change is constant. If it is, find the rate of change and explain what it represents. Right over here on the top of this table, it gives you a huge hint, okay? Airplane, okay? Descent. Who knows what descent means? Go ahead. Go down. Okay. Airplane that is descending, meaning it's slowly going down, okay? So the length of time in minutes, and then its current elevation at that time. So when we first start, it's at 60,000 feet. Three minutes later, it is now at 58,800 feet. Seven minutes later, it is now at 57,200 feet. And then finally at 15 minutes, it's at 54,000 feet, okay? So this one is actually hard to, to figure out. This is similar to what I put on the board at the beginning. You have to figure out what the rate of change is. So go ahead and do that on your boards. And then you have to figure out if it's constant. Okay? What does constant mean? It stays the same. same. Yep, good. So that means you're going to have to try three or four different points and see if it's always the same. There's a couple ways to do this, actually. I'm not gonna lie to you, this one is pretty hard. This is, we're going right to the difficult stuff right away. So what is the rate of change? This question is very difficult, okay? Especially the first time you see it. Okay, if you don't understand this one, this is a difficult problem. Maybe A. 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 Maybe
Confused faces, which is fine, and some confused answers. All right, so how do I even start this? So basically, I have my table. It starts at sixty thousand feet. It goes down to fifty-eight thousand eight hundred. Okay. So once we start doing these problems enough, you can write these as ordered pairs. Okay, so. I would have the first point is going to be zero, sixty thousand. My second point is going to be three, fifty-eight thousand eight hundred. Okay. So basically, all you're doing is you're looking at the change in time versus the change in elevation. Okay. So my y one, if I make this one and two. So I have x1, y1, and then x2, y2. So my formula is y2 minus y1, which is 58,800 minus 60,000. I take that and I will now divide by x2, which is 3, minus 0. Okay? So right here you have to worry about this. The sign is going to be negative. So 58,800 minus 60,000 is negative 1,200 feet in three minutes, okay? So now you take negative 1,200 divided by three, and you are going to get negative 400 feet in one minute, okay? Now the question is, there's two parts to this question. First, it does. This is one of your possible answers, negative 400, 400 feet per minute. Okay, because it's going down. You have to see if it's constant. Okay, so now what you're gonna do is you're going to take this point, so zero, 60,000, and this point, 15 and 54. Okay, the reason why you have to do that is it might change, okay? The airplane might speed up how fast it's going down or it might slow down how fast it goes down. So, you're gonna do it again. You're gonna take zero, 60,000, Your next point is going to be 15, 54,000. You're going to take 54,000 uh, and subtract, that's my bad, and subtract 60,000, which is y2 minus y1, and then 15 minus 0. 54,000 minus 60,000 is 6,000. So it's going to go down 6,000 feet in 15 minutes. So you get 15 minus 0. All you have to do is put in your calculator 6,000, negative 6,000 divided by 15, and you're going to get negative 400, okay? Which is 100% correct. So the rate of change is 400 feet per minute, and it's also constant because it's the same change from here to here, here to here, and from here to here, okay? So that's how you answer this question. This question is by far the hardest one on here. There might be one hardest, but we'll see. All right, so that's how you do this one. Now, number two, this one should be a little bit easier. All right, so we have to find the slope of this line. So if I make this bigger, what do I have to do to find the slope of a line that crosses through two points? I would just count up, rise over run. Okay, so what is my slope here, guys? What do you guys think? It goes up what? And then how far to the right does it go over? Okay, so two divided by two, my slope is one. Is this a positive or negative? Does everybody say positive? Okay, it's going from bottom left to top right. It's a positive slope. Any questions on this one? Okay, let's get to the two points. I think it's three, maybe. No, let's go to four. All right, the last one for today. You guys are going to find what the slope of this line is. 
using the slope formula. The two points are two nine. I'll make it bigger. So your two points are two nine and eight three. Okay, so go ahead and try to work that out by yourselves. First, I am gonna come around and help you guys out though, because this one's hard. So remember, you're gonna have to label each point as number one, point one, so it'd be x1, y1. Yeah, that's correct, like that. And then you plug it into the formula where you have y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. Okay, to solve this problem, the first step, and we'll go over like all the written steps on how to do this. The very first step that I want to do is I want to label my points. Okay, without labeling my points, it makes it really difficult. So I'm going to call this number one and this number two. Now I could do this in any order; it doesn't matter which one's which, as long as you just keep them in order. Okay. So when I have these, I'll color code them. Code it. My x1 is going to be 2. My x2 is going to be 8. My y1 will be 9. My y2 will be 3. Okay? So the first thing I'm going to do is take my y2. So it's y2 minus y1 over x2. My y2 is what, Luis? What do you guys think? 
My wife too, which number is it? Answer, it's going to be 3 minus 9. And then I'm going to divide by x2, which is, what is it guys? 8 minus 2. Okay. Alright, from there, you're going to take 3 and subtract 9. When you do this, you have to remember your sign. Okay, so 3 minus 9 is actually negative 6. Then finally, you're going to have 8 minus 2, which is just 6. Okay, so my slope is going to be negative 6 divided by 6, which is negative 1. Okay? This is going to be negative 1 slope. Okay. Any questions on this? Okay, you guys are all doing really well. All right, so that is going to be it for today. We are going to expand on it a little bit more. We're going to be doing this for the rest of this week. And this is all rate of change or your introduction to slope and rate of change.